Well, we had to take a class. Um, we're required to go on a summer study abroad experience. So during the semester um, last year, um, in the spring, we took a semester-long course about the history of Africa, the history of apartheid, um, to really get to know what the country was about before we got there. So it really helped to prepare us to, you know, when we actually got to the country. So mm, I think that Professor Mallon, who, who taught the course, she really selected a, a great amount of material for us to review. I mean, we only had, we only met about, I want to say like four times over the course of the semester, maybe mm -hmm. a couple more. Um, but, it, and it was for about like two hour sessions each. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for the amount of material that we got out of that, and it, it helped immensely once we got mm -hmm. there. Um, you know, she had us reading poetry, watching films. We watched coverage of the election while it was going on because it was it was happening right mm -hmm. a couple weeks before we, we left the, the other presidential election. And then when we finally got there, it was just absolutely amazing. Like, you can only learn so much from books and, and paper, but when you actually go there, it was unbelievable because we read about apartheid, but then we actually went there and saw the changes that has happened since then. And we just went in and I know I was just completely awed by what's going on. Like we had just gotten there right after the elections. We went to one of the capitals and the podium was still there from where the president spoke. So it was just like stepping right from the book, like the books we read right into the real thing. So it was just an amazing experience. I mean, and what a... What an amazing country. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would I would recommend anyone to go to South Africa because I just feel like it's such a unique country because it's it's in this period of transition. Mm -hmm. and that was a big focus of our course. Um, but like um, in this period of transition, you have this incredible synthesis between all the peoples, and they're just they're they're building all these projects that that really signify that they want change. Like, uh, one example is they have uh, a constitu constitutional court, and it's built from the same bricks of um, a prison that used to be right next door. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's very, everything in, in, in South Africa is very symbolic. We presented at the Academic Excellence Conference, um, but we each did research papers. Mine was on healthcare, because I'm a nutrition major. And it was really interesting, because you not only, like, I saw it from the American side, but then I got to see it from the South African side, and really see it developing, and just going through this whole transitional period. So it was really interesting to have a focus. So, and then mm. to be able to write a paper and then present to other people about it. So that was really exciting too. Mm. Yeah, and my focus was on um, the changing political atmosphere because right when we got there, they had just received a new president. And so w a lot of what my uh, research was, was to look into his background and to, um, I did a lot of personal interviews with people that we met there, uh, a lot of our tour guides. Um, a couple townspeople, and even a woman um, I met on the plane on the way back. I really tried to go into it without having expectations, because I mm -hmm. think that was one of the biggest things that we talked about in the class was to, you know, really open yourself up to experiencing this new place. And for a lot of us, South Africa was the most different place we'd ever <laughs> been in our lives. I think possibly for everyone that, that might have been, you know, the same experience. Um, so I know personally, I mean, I, I really don't think I was shocked until uh, maybe even I got back to the United States because I just, I really tried the entire two weeks, mm -hmm. um, well, a little over two weeks that we were there to just take everything in and understand it and just let it happen. And we talked um, about how it feels to go into a different uh, culture and I really was surprise like you hear oh Africa is the poorest country they're illiterate but I got there and people spoke eight different languages fluently and here's me being from America speaking English so no matter even what you think like I knew Afri South Africa wasn't the poorest country that people could read and write but still just from what you hear growing up and the things you just can't stop it and then you get there and it's just like wow you can speak eight languages fluently oh my god <laughs> When I came back to the United States, I was just so much more conscious mm -hmm. about other countries. Like, yep. I, I felt like I cared more about international issues from an American perspective. Um, and I've, it's been like that ever since I've been back. I mean, I, I love incorporating international 
like aspects to all of my work now. I just uh, I'm taking like an intercultural class this semester. I'm taking a, a global media class this mm -hmm. semester, and I choose those because I've had this experience abroad, and I just had a great time with it. Kind of going off, Corey. It's so amazing to come back and see how people's opinions really are. Where I've now gone to another country, I see how another culture lives and acts and interacts with each other, and then I come back and people are talking, you know, about just little tiny things like, oh, I gotta go shopping, or oh, I don't have the most updated iPod. But then it's so difficult for us because we've gone, we're now global citizens, we talked so much about that, that we have so many more experiences now that are just on a bigger picture, like all that globalization, culturalization, things like that, that it's hard to go back and, you know, tell my mom about the experience that I've had because she just, you know, she, they don't know. And then, you know, then they start talking, oh, got to go to the store and buy something, or, you know. <laughs> and it's just so different because we've been able to experience it. It's hard because not everyone has. And um, it's hard to try to explain people explain to people what the experience was like because it's so unique and so personal to us and what we did. So it, it is a hard transition. It's hard to get back into the swing of things where not everyone is like, whoa, international issues. <laughs> <laughs> not everyone's taking global classes, things like that. I think definitely, you know, whenever I met, it just comes up into, in conversation that, oh, I've been to South Africa. People are, you know, pretty interested. And I feel like I really, I love talking about mm -hmm. going there and about what I experienced and about what that country's going through. And I think that, you know, a big part of, you know, you can't go home again is continuing to, you know, disseminate that knowledge and that experience that you had abroad. Um, I think that, you know, that's crucial to, you know, keeping everyone informed, you know, because not a lot of people can't, like, uh, can't go to other countries or like don't have those opportunities presented to them you know we're very lucky that we've been able to do that um, so I just feel like it's kind of a personal charge mm -hmm. for me to to keep talking about it to keep uh, getting the conversation going about it mm -hmm. it's true it's um, very important to you know to go and talk to other people because before I went on the trip my grandparents and my mom were worried they're like make sure the poisonous spiders and the rhinos don't come after you. And now that I've come back and I've shared my knowledge with them, my mom called me the other day and she's like, Nelson Mandela's in the paper. <laughs> and I'm like, that's really what we want to get out of it is that people now aren't thinking about Africa as the rhinos coming after me. They're thinking about actual global issues. And, you know, we can't go home because we have that knowledge now. We have to tell other people. But then then they get the information too and can you know, call me up and, and talk about international things. So, I've definitely altered my plans since <laughs> going to South Africa. Um, you know, uh, you, you, you talk about changing your traje trajectory. I really have. Um, <laughs> I really, I know I've always wanted to do journalism um, and I do, I do still want to do that, but I really want to incorporate that with some sort of international component now. Um, I want to work for an international nonprofit. I want to work for an international NGO um, doing, you know, the media side of things. I would love to do that. I'd love to work on, you know, developmental communication, you know, utilize my minor with that, you know, and especially partner with, you know, Africa because, I, you know, it's a place that I have a, you know, a special place in my heart for now. Um, but really... I just, the, th the way it's changed me is I just really have, a, a, you know, a much bigger passion towards bringing myself out there into the international community to help others and using, you know, the skills that I get here uh, and the experiences I've had here at Keene State to, to help others around the world. I really am more aware of global issues, like what Corey was saying, um, it's not just America or it's not just South Africa the world is being globalized like there's people are interacting people are traveling more often and I really think that's very important and now has become part of my life where I'm not just thinking about Key New Hampshire I'm thinking about what can I do for the whole world or um, there's programs in grad school that are international health or international nutrition and I never would have thought about that before